Welcome back to Bexhill West and thank you for joining me. Now we've reached the point at Bexhill West where it's time to lay some track and I'm undecided at the moment whether it will be wired up with DC or DCC control but in any case there's going to need to be lots and lots of track feeds and I'll be giving some thought to that. For the purposes of testing I'll be testing with DC control and I'd like to wire it up in such a way that I can sort of chop and change the wiring um, should I wish to change to DCC or if I sort of learn some more ways of doing things and, and think of a different way of doing it. So with that in mind I've come up with a little junction box. Now the sort of the the key thing here is that I want to use solderless connections below the baseboard um, and really for a couple of reasons. Firstly, if they're solderless, it'll be very easy for me to uh, chop and change around what I'm doing with the track feeds. Um, but secondly, it's a bit of a pain working upside down with a soldering iron and I want to keep things neat. I want to avoid a spaghetti of wires all over the place. So I'm keen where possible to run cabling in trunking um, and certainly have a system which is quite flexible as I'm quite certain my ideas will change as this project progresses. So with that in mind let's put one of these boxes together and we'll see how it's all going to work. Now then, before I can consider the wiring under the baseboard, we need to think about how I'm going to get it under the baseboard. And what I've chosen to do is use a little fret of um, rail droppers. And these are sold by Palatine models. And what I'm doing here is just tidding the strip on, the, on one side of them. Now you'll see these things, they come as a fret. And the next thing I'm going to do is to chop these into single elements. Now, I think it's quite commonplace to solder your wires directly to the underside of the rails, 
but in in this case I wanted um, I wanted my connections to be repairable and the wonderful thing about these little rail droppers is they solder to the underside of the rail and the the, sort of the donut shape that you could see on them ends up sitting on top of the baseboard just to one side of the sleepers and the great thing about that is you can bring your wire up from underneath it can be soldered on top of the baseboard and if a problem develops at a later date you can unsolder it and remove the wire and replace it now you'll see when we get to the end of this sequence that these end up sort of these will be buried in the ballast so you won't see them but I shall keep a record of where each of them are so they will be easy to sort of dig up if I need to now what I'm doing here is just tinning the underside of the rail and what you can't see here is my left arm is wrapped around the camera tripod and I'm sort of craning my head around the camera um, and what I didn't notice at the point of filming this was that I just didn't get the rail hot enough um, I can see me come back here and have a try to repair the job but basically I didn't get the rail hot enough there that solder should have flown or flowed uh, much more easily so here I've got the the little etched nickel silver palatine model rail dropper and I'm just bending one end of it now this is again really fiddly I'm again I'm working around the camera I should have I don't know filmed this differently this was another exercise in dexterity and I found a better way of doing this actually um, after I'd done this job and you can sort of see some of the problems I think I come up with a solution here yeah there we go we put the soldering iron stand on there and that stopped the track from moving about but again my left arm is wrapped around a camera tripod and I'm sort of peering over the camera and looking in the viewfinder um, it's not really the, the right way of doing it anyway I've left this clip in because it shows quite clearly how these little sort of etched pieces stick out from the sides of the track um, and you can if this was something that was of interest to you you could probably um, imagine yourself doing it from this from this clip like I said I actually found a better way of doing it and I think my preferred method is now to solder the dropper wire onto the donut and then hold the thing with the dropper wire and it makes the whole job much easier but anyway they've attached quite nicely they're not going to fall off in a breeze so at this point the track has been offered up and hopefully you can just see the little fret there and I'm just marking the position of the rail droppers with a pen now I can lift it out of the way and come in here and drill the hole and hopefully sort of the advantage of this now becomes a little bit more obvious in as much as hopefully you could see that because that soldered connection is not under the rail should I at any point in time need to fix it you know, hopefully I wouldn't need to but just in case I do it shouldn't be the end of the world there we go that's the holes drilled so at this point I've soldered the wires onto those little etchings I'm not sure what we're going to call them and they just feed through the board just as you would with the wires soldered to the underside of the track Now what's not obvious I might try and put a, a picture up on the screen of just how low profile these things are they're, they're really quite unobtrusive okay so this would be a view from the underside of the board but in this case I've I've, I've turned the board the right way up so that gravity is on my side here so there's my little junction box and the wire had a bit of a kink in it there we go that was a bit fiddly to get on so that sits in place and on, the, on this particular box and there is a second one we'll come to that in a bit this particular box is just held on with one screw now I mentioned these solderless connectors um, these are rated for single core wire as well as stranded flex 
um, and they're rated to cope with not only the different cross-sectional areas of the two wires that I'm using here, so these ones obviously are very fine, but also the, the fatter cables that I'm going to use um, sort of carry the main power. Um, these connectors will, will work with both. Now I've got nothing against soldering per se, I've done plenty of it, um, got no problem with, with soldering, but as I say, I'm still undecided on the final configuration, um, especially if I go with DCC. So this way I can sort of wire this up, test it. If I need to change the routing of any of the wires, well I can drill additional holes in the side of this little junction box. Um, and I can chop and change it without too much aggravation but the important thing as far as I was concerned is that the fine uh, dropper wires or feeder wires are not going to catch on something and get snagged and get ripped out so hopefully this should end up to be a fairly robust little setup. Now the cover plate will go on and I'm undecided this might end up being a piece of clear acrylic. I didn't have any clear acrylic but you should see there's a hole in there and the, sort of the legend track active when lit. So I've designed a little printed circuit board that will also fit in that cavity um, and will illuminate an LED uh, just to show the track powers on. Um, and it should also show the phase of, it's got a bicolor LED in and it will show the phase of the track wiring. So on DCC, um, it will, you know, if I look underneath and they're all green or they're all red or whatever, I, I'll know that each little junction box has been wired up correctly. Now I mentioned that there were two of these and, and this is the second junction box. And really it was the design of this junction box that sort of stopped me from just going out and buying some junction boxes. I know the invention of the junction box is certainly not original, but this was the second idea. And you'll see that this one's got three sets of connectors. There are two screw holes and three dropper wire holes. And hopefully it's not rocket science. These will be used for turnouts. So the main track wires will come in here and here, but the feeder to the uh, the, the V or the, the frog will, will come in to the center terminal block. Now the idea here, excuse me, the idea here is that we can, um, I can take so obviously three wires in, three wires out. I think I'll use relays to switch these, I'm still undecided, but again the, the fine droppers will be contained within this box, this will be screwed up from underneath and they won't snag or, or pull or, or what have you. Now this one has the same track active when lit um, sort of legend on it, so this will illuminate red or green um, depending on the sort of the phase of the DCC coming in. Um, and then there will be another LED here which will light to indicate the polarity of the frog. So that if I'm working upside down underneath the board trying to figure out what's going on, um, I have a visual reference from what's going on here. Um, and the color of this LED will match hopefully all the other little junction boxes along the particular line. Um, and then this one here will tell me what the frog is set to. Now I haven't built that little circuit yet, that will go in here and I may well have to add another sort of layer to this particular sandwich just to bring this up to create the space for it. Um, but the, the printed circuit board is designed and when my new etching machines are all up and running I will etch those um, and make those and we'll see if they work. But that then is the turnout junction box. Now all of this leads me to a question for you, the viewers. So I'll get a piece of paper and uh, I'll present the problem and we'll see if any of you clever people um, will be able to answer it for me. So then my question relates to DCC wiring. Now I'm familiar with the concept of a DCC bus. So for the purposes of this drawing and try to keep this um, fairly schematic, I'm going to stick my two DCC bus wires in here. Now in practice they of course might be running down the centre of the boards but I've kept them separate here just for the, the purposes of keeping this clear. 
So it's my understanding that each one of these droppers or feeder points will require a connection to, in this case, the red and the black. And so each of these will be red, something like this. I won't put all of them on, I think you get the idea. And each one will have a, a sort of black connection. The colours, of course, could be could be anything, but uh, in fact, I think red and black is, in some ways, uh, um, misleading for a, an AC setup. But anyway, there we go. So DCC traditional setup. There's the bus wires, and there's the connections to each of the the feeders. Now that makes perfect sense to me, and I've simplified it here. But I understand that. My concern is that when I've put the feeders into all of the, the bits, this is, could potentially become a mess. Hence my desire to sort of create the junction boxes and, and try to tidy it up. Um, but I have a question as an alternative way that I think I would prefer to do this, but I don't know if there's some reason why it wouldn't work. So I thought what I'd do is, is ask you, because there will be people watching, I'm sure, who will have a, a perfect understanding. So what I've got here is the same thing. The green boxes represent the two baseboards that I'm working on. And what I wondered was, would it be possible to connect, I'm going to use the same colours to sort of keep this consistent, connect all of my reds together, perhaps something like this, and then all the blacks down and daisy chain across. And so effectively do that for each of these lines that are running down. And again, I won't do this for all of the lines, but you hopefully you get the idea. So we'll have red and black. So these things are, I guess, kind of wired in parallel, I suppose you might say. Um, and then my, my thinking was, could these then be bought to uh, a bus connection here so that effectively these are long feeders off of sort of a central bus my idea was that this could be a power district and then the next section on would be another power district and then perhaps the good yard would be another power district um, but I'm not sure so if anybody knows in the comments, if you could sort of let me know if I'm on the right lines here, just say no, version two is no good. It's, it's got to be version one. That's the way to do it. And, and it's fine. If that is the way to do it, that's that's fine. Um, but I think this would make for a neater installation if this would work. So over to you. If you've got some great ideas, do please let me know. Of course, it's all pretty academic because um, none of this was being built to, <laughs> to actually work. And I think my preference would be for radio control anyway. I think that's that's got to be the way to go these days. But anyway, given that sort of DCC or and DC even seems to be the way these trains run, I think I ought to incorporate it. Um, so if you know which which of these two methods would work, I'd be delighted to hear from you. So that's it from me for this time. Next week, we're going to be looking at the platforms um, and hopefully you'll be able to join me for that. Thanks for watching. Cheerio.